Chris Reed. story and, and you know what I wasn't gonna open with something from that trip but it's it's so worth it's I just have to share this part with you right so we're the first night we decide we're gonna go get steaks and there's a, like 20 guys and um, and there's not enough room for 20 guys in in the vehicles you know because I don't know what those guys were planning on doing but so we decide right, we're gonna go get steaks and we figure this place out and we're like hey it's like you know just like 0.8 miles away and it's 12 degrees or something like that and and we've got this white tundra that, that Mick rented and so because it's like 0.8 miles away like half a dozen guys jump in the bed of the truck right and and then we cram up in, in inside and then we realize as we get on the highway that it's like eight miles away and, and it's like 10 degrees and it's night and I see Dave and all these other guys back there and they've got their drawstrings tied up so tight. And they're like, <laughs> and I'm like, all these ballers back here in the bed of this truck, freezing. And then the funniest thing was, as I'm looking, I'm like, is that an empty seat? <laughs> There's an empty seat in the cab of the truck. I'm like, what in the world? So, funny. I will never forget that, guys. Okay. So listen, I'm gonna try and give you, normally I'm a rah-rah guy, but I'm gonna try and give you some hard numbers today. But I wanna start out with one of the things that actually Monica uh, Ward told me and it really stuck, which is the only difference between me or any of the guys you see up on stage and you is time and consistency. It's time and consistency. That's the only difference. And the thing about, the, the reason that I've been successful in this business is because I told myself, if it's possible, I'm going to do it. If it's really up to me, I'm going to do it. I worked as a cop for 17 years and I was the hardest working sergeant at the police department, made more arrests than any, all of the other sergeants put together, but as the lowest paid because they paid strictly by time and grade, not effort and not the value that I was bringing. This is exactly the opposite of that. I get to choose how successful I am. You guys get to choose how successful you are. And you have to take ownership of that. So the numbers, I'm gonna tell you what I do, okay? The first thing that I do is I listen to my upline. When they tell me that I'm doing, that I need to do something, I do it, right? Because to begin with, the first time that Monica told me, hey, she, I want, she wanted me to do this, <coughs> excuse me, I started giving her excuses because she wanted me to travel to, to a seminar. Ironic, right? Um, she wanted me to travel to a seminar, and I, I came up with, you know, my time excuse and my money excuse. What are the two excuses that we get from everybody when we want to talk to them about a challenge back? Time and money. And my upline told me to do something, and I was giving her the same excuse. And I was like, dude, what kind of a dirt bag am I that I'm giving her the same excuse that people give me, and it drives me crazy. So. You have to understand that you, the, and it's the same thing with, with, with your business. You have to, it's, it takes that time. It doesn't necessarily take the money unless you're not on freaking Shake HD, which is ridiculous or something to get your 90 points. But so, the hard numbers that I wanna to talk to you about is three and five, okay? And so, to, cause Success Club Five is not gonna put you on this stage. Success Club Five is not going to let you design your life. Success Club Five, is probably not going to get you out of debt. So you have to set that as a minimum. What I tell my people is three to five coaches every month. You need to bring in three to five coaches every single month. If you, if you plan on legitimately changing your life with this business, okay? Stay with that number. And then you have to get three to five of your own people in Success Club. And you have to have these hard goals here instead of just saying, hey, you know what? I make success club every month and I'm good. You know, three to five of your coaches, you need to make sure that they're in success club. And I have, I have an assistant who every week she sends me a deal. I mean, I could probably do it myself, but 
But that's what she's for. And then she tells me every week, this is how much, how many success club points your people have. And so, you know, those people I reach out to them, I'm like, hey, you got two points. What are we doing on, on, on these last five, or, you know, five or three as a, as a minimum? As a minimum. You know, Dave Ward, had, uh, when, when I went to that seminar that Monica told me to go to because I found a way to make it happen, um, you know, he said something to me one time that, that has really resonated with me about, you know, putting the words at least in front of your goals, right? If you say, my goal is success club five, when you get to five, you just coast, right? Because you made your goal. But if you change it to, my, my goal is at least success club five, then you kind of give yourself permission to go past that. And you, you should really say, hey, I did five, I'm, I'm gonna go ahead and, and shoot for 10. So, three to five posts a day on social media. <clears throat> and I'm telling you guys, you're gonna have to deal, especially us guys, with the lack of social esteem that comes from posting three to five times a day as a guy on Facebook or, or whatever it is that you're posting on. I'm telling you, know, I spent 15 years on SWAT and you wanna talk about people who wanna make fun of a guy who takes a picture of his breakfast. Right? Or you know, they're like, hey, man, did you, did you go to the can this morning? I didn't see it on Facebook. You know, and I'm like, nah, 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 nah. watch, and watch. You know, so three to five posts a day. And like somebody else was alluding to, it's not beach buddy, beach buddy, beach buddy, beach buddy, beach buddy. It is what makes you, you. Okay, my brand is, um, you know, I'm, I'm, I'm part of beach body, right? Of course, used to be a cop. Still pretty partial to cops. I'm Texan. I vote for the right party, not the wrong party. Um, and you actually want to kind of keep that out until you get to a certain level, because because you're kind of you know excluding half of the country, whichever party you vote for. Um, and and you know and and just build that brand, you know. And your beach body post, or your you know, I want to change that to a fitness or a lifestyle post. Instead of a beach body post, it's not, you know, three to five posts a day, and one of them is me with my shaker cup, you know, every day. No, that's not the kind of thing that you want to worry about. But the, same, the thing that you also don't want to worry about is those knuckleheads who message you and they're like, hey, just let you know, people get annoyed at you. Beach body posts. You're like, cool, thanks. I'm going to go ahead and keep doing what I'm doing. Because those people aren't going to do anything anyway. They're having to make fun of you to feel better about the fact that they're not doing the things that you're doing. There's still people at the police department who make fun of what I, what I chose to do. That's fine. They probably at work right now. And, and, you know, and, and that's, that's completely okay. Three to five posts a day. Three to five friends added a day. You have to be constantly adding to your, net, to your network and to your funnel. Because if you're not doing that, then you're not broadening your market, right? People, and, and the people that you're sitting here and talking to now, they've really, you know, they've heard your message. Now they might come in later, because I'm telling you, you know, those guys who told me no in the very beginning, and they saw me buy a truck, and they saw me buy a house, and they saw me, you know, go get Disney season passes, and they saw this, and you know, he signs up, and he's like, "Jeez, man, okay, I want to sign up for you buy a helicopter." Because I've been saying no for so long. So you know, those are the Weight Watchers, and we all have them. But the thing is about those Weight Watchers is you have to prove them wrong. You have to stay consistent in this business. I love analogies in this business, especially in the beginning. It's like those guys on Survivor, it cracks me up that they go to Survivor and they don't know how to start a fire with two sticks. I mean, I don't either, but if I was going to Survivor, I'd figure it out. But that's what it's like, right? You got these two sticks and they're sitting there and they're doing that, trying to start that fire or whatever. All of this work for, for a little bitty freaking ember. All of this work and it's so hard and it's so hard and you don't see the results and, you know, and maybe you see a little bit of smoke, but then you get tired and you stop. And then you're at ground zero again. You know, if you're like, hey, I'm gonna change my life with Beachbody. And then you're like, you know, stop posting about Beachbody and it's all this other stuff where you just disappear. Then you're back in the jungle hunting for two new sticks and everything that you've already done is gone. But if you stay consistent in this, in this message 
and consistent in these actions, and you get that ember going, you know, guys, my freaking fire covers this stage now. You know, and, and all I gotta do, I'm, like on my way to Disney, I throw a couple of sticks on it. And then on my way back, you know, I throw a couple of logs on it. Because I've got that momentum now. But the thing, but I had to put that sweat equity in, in the beginning. Three to five posts, three to five friends. People will message you and they'll be like, hey, do I know you? And I'm like, no. You know, but I found you, you know, and I find those people in groups, right? Um, you, go to, you go to Facebook groups or you start your own. Right, that's even a better way to do it. There's a 5K in your na in your neighborhood. I, I don't really even like running, but I run all the time because it's good for business. Okay, and so if there's a 5K or a mud run or something like that coming up in your town, start a freaking group to train for that. You're the admin of the group. You can bring to everybody who comes in, and they're not going to really be that worried about it. And I don't start hitting these people up on day one about, hey, thanks for my friend request. Check it out, I'm starting a challenge group. I just let them see what I'm doing. And then they come to me because they've been watching and they see this stuff and they come to me. So I'm constantly adding friends. And I mean, people will message me and I have no idea where I found them, you know? I really don't know where I found them, but they message me and we've been friends for like three years. I've been watching what you're doing, thinking about, I got that, I don't even know who she was. <laughs> She, uh, somebody messaged me and goes, hey, I want to buy 21 day fix. Is that something that you can help me out with? I have no idea who she is, but I mean, I'll figure it out and, and, I'll, and I'll make that happen. That's what we're trying to accomplish with this is building a brand to where when people think about getting in shape or people think about changing their lives, they need to think about you guys. They need to think about this is the person who does this because that brand is there consistently. Let me get some water here, guys. So the thing about this, this event, and all events, right, is you have to put this stuff in action. You have to do this when you leave here. You, you know, and, and I, I posted in the, in the video, or in the, in the training community, right, about the guys, and I'm picking on anyone, but about the guys who come to Summit as an Emerald year after year. And I'm like, what are you, what? It's a big freaking party for you. You're not, you know, I mean, what is it that you're not getting or you're not applying? So you have to set these goals and you have to constantly be moving forward. And you have to own your business. So I want you guys to write down the 10X rule by Grant Cardone. If you haven't read it, it's fantastic. <clears throat> I want you to write down that you're gonna start with chapter six because sometimes people don't finish books but I think you can at least all finish a chapter and, and that one chapter is worth it. Because basically what that chapter is about, and I, I love that, you know, I love that Gary talked about it and, it's, and it, I really didn't have a name for it or, or had heard it from anybody else, but everything that happens to us is our fault. But the cool thing is everything that happens to us, we get to kind of take credit for too. Now, in the book, he takes that to an extreme and, and it might make some people wrinkle their nose, you know, because he talks about um, somebody losing power because someone crashed into a utility pole and so they lost power, so they, all of, the, all of the food in the refrigerator froze, or not froze, it's, it's uh, spoiled, right? And so this person's like, oh man, I lost all of that meat and I lost all of this stuff, you know, not my fault. And he's like, yeah, it is, why do you have a generator? Of course it's your fault. Is it not possible for you to lose electricity? Were you not aware that that's a possibility? And so it is your fault because you weren't prepared for it. And so, you know, I take it a step further. I don't think he puts this in the book, but even if I'm sitting at a red light and, and somebody rear ends me, clearly, traditionally, not my fault, okay? And I'm not really culpable for it, but my mindset is, I will still go back and I'll be like, man, if I'd have gone back inside and picked up my shades, or if I'd have you know, gone through the drive-through and, and you know, grabbed, a, grabbed a drink or something, if I'd been in a different lane, I wouldn't have been in that spot. Now, the reason that I'm doing that 
is because otherwise I have no control over it. I, and so I would rather have, find my way to, to, to change and impact my situation as opposed to just saying, oh, you know what? Nothing I could have done. Nothing I could have done. Because if I'm able to do that with this business and my life, then I'm the one running it and I'm the one designing it. You know, when I talk to my coaches and I'm like, hey, you gonna make success club this month? And they're like, I'm trying. If they say anything other than yes, then I know the answer is no. Because if they're trying, if they've got irons in the fire, if they're talking to people, if they're doing some follow-ups, you know, if that's the answer they give me, something other than yes, then I know they're not gonna make it. Because success club is a non-negotiable and they're already not speaking victory to themselves. They're giving themselves permission to not make it. But they're gonna say, well, I'm trying, you know, I did it. And here's, here's the thing, guys, using that same philosophy, you know, when I say, hey, did you make a success club last month? I know they didn't. And most of them now know me to where they don't give me any of the nonsense that, that I would call them on. They're like, no, I didn't, I didn't talk to enough people. Because that's it, right? If you don't make success club, it's your friggin' fault, 100%. You didn't, it's not, I didn't make success club because this guy didn't buy the challenge pack like he said he was going to on the 30th. I didn't buy the challenge, I didn't make success club because, you know, this person returned their challenge pack from the month before and I started out at negative two. I didn't make success club because this person, you know, didn't want to use their credit card. It's not their responsibility for you to make success club. It's your responsibility. It's your responsibility for your business. So if you didn't make success club, you didn't talk to and connect with enough people. Three to five a day minimum. Talking to people, three to five a day. Adding people, three to five a day. Let's just go with, you know what, they say 30 minutes of personal development, 35 minutes a day of personal development. <laughs> you know, you just put those numbers out there for you. So as we're leaving here, and I know I think that somebody's gonna talk on this a little bit more, so I don't wanna steal too much thunder, but you know, and so let's talk about setting some goals and making them tangible, okay? You can't say, I'm gonna be a successful beach body coach. I mean, you can, but it's much more powerful to say, I'm going to, and then put a number or a, 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 you know, a, an action to that goal. What does a successful beach body coach mean to you? Does that mean he makes 100K? Does it mean he doesn't have to work overtime? Does it mean he's out of debt? Whatever that success, level of success means to you, say that, okay? But then you've got to break it down. You're going to say, by this time, and how, you, how I'm going to do that by making it smaller steps, okay? So let's say time for a brand new coach. Somebody signs up, and they're like, you know, and they tell me, oh, man, I'm going to kill this thing. And I'm like, cool, well, you're going to make success club then, you know, first month. I don't care if there's a week left. You know, because how, how excited are you? How motivated are you? A 10. Cool, me too. I've made success club 72 months in a row. So, sounds like this is month one, because we're both 10s. And, you know, sometimes it works, a lot of times it works. But, then they say, I'm gonna be diamond in two months. I'm like, okay, awesome. Diamond in two months, that's fantastic. That's a coach a week. Okay, so I break that down. Diamond is eight coaches, right? So if, they, if a week from they to, the day they told me that, they don't, they don't have their first coach, then they're behind. I mean, they're really kind of behind regardless if you have your coach, first coach in a week. But I say, okay, cool. Th that's a coach a week. Because otherwise people have this, you know, this, this end of semester cram mentality where they, where they kind of goofed off all semester. So they're just going to cram and they're going to sign all eight coaches on the 30th. Or, or, or on the second. So if you break it down and you're like, okay, I've coached a week, and by the end of the fourth week, you should have your first demo. You know? And so you set those and you break them down and then you make it happen again. Two star diamond, same thing. <coughs> you know, and you have to think about, you have to add then how many coaches you're talking about now. 12 coaches, you have 12 coaches, and a diamond on each side. But you know, the number one, especially when we start getting to, to two-star or these other higher ranks, 
you got to add that up, right? Because you don't want to be a heart attack diamond where, you know, Joe Garvey's ragman over here pauses at Shakeology for, for a month and you, you lose your rank. The reason I talk about three to five coaches and the reason that I add that padding is because people are going to quit. People are going to give up on their dreams. There's two things that's going to happen to everybody in this room as far as Beachbody is concerned, right? You're either going to succeed or you're going to quit and you're going to give up. That's the only two things that coaches do. You either succeed or you quit and you give up. <clears throat> Who here wants to quit their day job? Okay. Who here doesn't want to quit their day job? And that's okay. Okay. Mick McCallister, you don't have a day job. <laughs> okay, so listen, and, and I say this without without judgment, but I found it to be true for myself. I loved my job as a cop, right? When I, was, when I was five years old, that's what I wanted to do. I wanted to be a cop. I wanted to drive fast, you know, thumb heads, jump benches, do all that cool stuff. And I, and I loved it. And so when I was a coach, a, a younger coach, you know, I was like, I'm not quitting my job. I might stop working overtime and stuff like that. But, you know, uh, Patrick Santiago, I think, is the one who told me this, and, and it rings so true to me. He's like, the people who say I would never quit my day job, I think that it's pretty safe to say that in their brain right now, it's not possible that they wouldn't be able to. You're giving yourself that out to say, well, you know, I would never quit. So you don't put that on the radar. So let's change it to, I dare you to put yourself in a position to where when you wake up on Friday or Monday morning, that you're going to work <coughs> because you just really love it that much not because you have to do it to pay the bills. And if you still want to stay at that job, awesome. But I dare you to put yourself in a position where it's a choice. Because I was that guy who said, I'm not quitting my day job. And then when it became a reality, I started wondering why I'm lacing my boots up at 4.30 in the morning, you know, gonna go out there, miss my kids' soccer games, have to ask somebody else for permission to go to my kids' book, uh, you know, birthday parties, hope I get Christmas off, or, you know, God forbid, you know, end up laying next to my squad car with, with a bullet in my ear uh, so that I could, you know, get this job that is paying me a third of what Beachbody is paying me. You know, when I left, at 17 years, three years away from retirement, People laughed and they scoffed and they were like, whoa, what the biggest mistake you ever made. Actually, um, yeah, Hudge was telling me a firefighter that he talked to the other day, works in the same city as I, I used to, said, man, can't believe that guy left. 17 years, crazy. You know? And I'm like, read that monthly pension, that's two days pay now. You know? <laughs> signing up as a coach. When I talk to people, when I talk to people about this business or the fitness programs, I'm doing them a favor. One of the best conversations they're going to have that decade, because I know if they do it and they do it right, it will absolutely change their lives. It will, whether they need to lose weight or they want to make money. And the reason that I can say that is because I did both. Right? It should go without saying, you guys got to freaking do a program and do it all the way through and get your before and afters, right? I mean, that, that should be a given. And changing, helping other people change their lives. When I'm talking to people, you know, I mean, I've had people, you know, I can just see and they're all grinning, because I'm grinning and they're like, 
I don't even know what you're talking about, but I want to do it. You're just so excited. I'm like, I am excited because if you do this, it will change your life. And when I was a kid, or when I was a young man, as a cop, or even a little bit younger than that, you know, I, I actually thought about how I was going to make the world a better place, right? It's pretty deep for a teenage boy, I think. But, and, and at that time, I was like, well, I'm gonna have a couple of kids and I'm gonna raise them to be good. And so, you know, I'm only one person and if I don't bring two good people into the world, then that's my part. When I became a cop, you know, I used to count, okay, this, this is how many people are alive because I did some hero stuff and saved them. And these Jack Holmes over here are alive because I didn't kill them when they needed it. So that's my contribution <laughs> to, to the world. Maybe this, maybe this isn't as much of a contribution as this group is. But that's, that was how I used to measure my contribution to the world then. Now, guys, now, there are people on our teams who've lost 200 pounds. There are people on our team who have become full-time coaches and you know, traveled the country with their kids and got out of debt. They've gone, you know, they're following their dreams. All of these things, because I bought you know, a, a coach membership. And so, you know, there's guys, you know, like Adam and, and these other cops that I've talked to and the other soldiers, made, like we heard yesterday, you know, they've done some hero stuff and, and, and really made a real impact on the world. But I think, I know that using this vessel, this vehicle, that when everybody in this building is dead and gone and our children, are dead and gone, people are gonna be living a better and different life. Because in 2009, I signed up as a coach and I impacted their parents' lives who raised better children and impacted their lives. And those people, because they had better parents and they were raised by better parents and had a better upbringing three, four generations from now, they're living a better life. They're not gonna have any idea who Chris Reed is, what P90X was probably. But they will be living a better life because of the actions that I've taken. And that drives me, guys. It drives me. So that's what our opportunity is here. Outside of just building and designing our own lives and changing stuff for us, we're about leaving a freaking legacy for generations to come. Thank you very much.